Hi, thanks for joining us today. It's Roy and Val here at Delphi. Um, we are COVID free and vaccinated, so we're gonna uh, continue on. So we this is kind of a continuation of our last um, presentation that we did about glass cutting. And we afterwards we were like, wow, we didn't really even talk about how to do a curve. So we wanted to just spend a couple of minutes with you today to show you how uh, we cut curves. And I think Val could probably attest to it that I mean, there's not like one perfect way, set way of doing curves. I mean, everybody does it a little different, so uh, you're gonna see how I do it, I guess. So I wanna show you two different types of curves. I'm gonna draw on the uh, glass here so you can sort of see what they kind of look like. So one's gonna be like an outside curve, like, so for here, I'm gonna cut this piece out, I don't care what happens there. This one I'm gonna do what's called an inside curve where I'm gonna cut out all the pieces on the inside. But let's do this one first. It's a little easier. So I'm gonna put on my safety glasses. And then uh, I'm just gonna cut this in half just cause it makes it a little easier for me to, to work with. So what's this one? This is the outside yeah, curve? Yeah, I'm gonna do the outside curve on this one. So, so yeah. yeah, usually what I tell people is like if I have this set up like this and, and we teach people to push when they're doing a score, right? So if I'm pushing, you can see how kind of awkward it becomes to get to the outside part of that curve. So one advantage to drawing on the glass is I can turn the glass to make it easier for me to score. And the, the term I always use is I say you want to score across your body is how I refer to it. So since I'm right handed, I would start here and score this way. And the reason why is I have more control of the cutter that way. It's not, you know, drawing, you know, when you draw, you can get kind of loose with your hand. But here we want to think of like locking your wrist a bit. So, and keeping your pressure consistent. Yeah, that, keeping it. That's a lot about where you stand, so you don't have to like climb up on the table to keep your yeah, pressure. Get it around. Yeah. Yep, that's a good point. So I'm going to do this uh, quick, and then as we kind of do it, I'll, I'll point some things out, or Val will uh, mention some things. So I'm going to come in here again. Think of keeping the wrist. Uh, I'm rotating my you know upper body. I don't know if you probably couldn't see that very well, but I was doing this. I was kind of turning with the score, right, locking, kind of bringing my elbow out and around. That gives me more control over the cutter, and so I know I'm gonna get a decent score that way. When you're scoring on a line, it's kind of sometimes hard to see your score because it's on top of the line, right? So um, a lot of times when I'm breaking out a curve like this, I always break it from the um, where I finish, because a lot of times I think I do a better job finishing my score than I do sometimes starting out. Now. Uh, when I squeeze this, it's going to break to about here, and then it's just going to shoot off somewhere. That's what it does. Now, normally, you know, if I was trying to conserve the glass, I might have cut it down so it was a little smaller, a little narrower. So what can we say? This this is truly the, the easiest one out of the two because, yeah. because we don't really care what happens out here. So if this breaks and it, you know, that's no big deal because this half circle is the piece we want. Yep. So the other one's going to be the opposite. So just to, because I think sometimes it's hard to understand. Yeah. This one, we don't care if it actually doesn't yep. break perfectly. So I squeeze it. Oh, wow, look at that. Oh, so look at that. Sometimes it's a professional. Well, right? there you go. So almost like I know what I'm doing. Right? <laughs> yeah. So that was pretty lucky. Um, and then I want to show you now, this one is really the trickier part of the two curves inside curve. Now, here the thinking is I want this piece for my project and I don't really care what happens to this inside part, right? So I want to cut that out. Now, um, as I mentioned earlier, I, you could probably hand this to five different stained glass people and they would cut it out five different ways. So I'm just going to show you the way that I do it. I, I think it makes sense in my brain. So um, let me show you what we're going to do here. So I'm going to score this not on the line, but I'm going to try to do shorter and shallower scores. And I'm going to put one on here so you can see it. That was a little aggressive there. I, can you see the score okay? It's, uh, Maybe if, you should just yeah, let me draw it on like there. How you're divide it this is how, um, this is the score I just made. So if you're having a hard time seeing it, you can see this little dot, you know, that dash line is the score I just made. So what I'm trying to do is get a shorter and probably more importantly, shallower version of what I'm trying to cut out, right? So I don't wanna to go too deep because uh, it, the glass won't break out nice. Uh, we can't break this with running pliers because you can see the running player doesn't really get onto the glass, right? This doesn't get on the edge of the glass. And that's the only way this tool works. So I'm gonna come in with the breaker grosers, right? This tool, and it's important to remember that we wanna use the flat side on top of the glass whenever we can. I'm gonna hold the glass 
firmly with my left hand, come in here. I usually like to grab it from one end or the other, so I'm gonna grab it down here, um, pull that piece out. Right? So I'm doing a little bending and kind of pulling mm -hmm. at the same time. That kind and of you know, motion. a lot of people, this, this breaker grocer tends to be the more finesse tool. So it does tend to be the one we hear about people getting the most frustrated with, right? So yeah. that's, you know, just hearing us say it, but truly what was really important about what he said is the really firm grip. The really firm grip on your glass, the really firm grip on your pliers, and then it does snap pretty much easier than if you're not holding tight. Yeah, that's that's good advice. So I did another one, so real quick here, um, you know, scored it, and again, I just drew on the score line so you can see it easier at home. I know that sometimes it's hard to see the score line. Um, I'm gonna come here, and now here I'm grabbing it down on this end. One of the things I think is important, you know, grabbing it here, if something goes wrong, it could break up into that piece, right? So if I grab it here, if something goes wrong, more than likely it's just gonna break into the part I'm trying to get rid of anyway, so. But see his fingers underneath there too, he'll move yeah. them at the last minute. You don't yeah. let your fingers stay under that score line. Yeah, yeah, I'm just trying to get a nice grip on there, but. So, ask, um, ask me how I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, you got it cut, right? <laughs> Nope, don't want that to happen again. Nope. So I'm grabbing it here and then I'm just gonna pull that out, right? So now if you start to see what I'm left with, I'm sh certainly left with something a little shorter. I mean, it's not a whole lot shorter, but certainly shallower, which is probably the more important thing of what I'm trying to get out. So um, I really should cut this out in probably a couple more scores. I'll see if I can do it in a couple just because of time. Mm -hmm. um, I'll come in here and score this. And I'm not gonna draw on this one because I think you sort of get the idea, right? I'm doing uh, shallow scallop scores come in here pull that one out and you can see what i'm left with is just this now again i try to keep this around a quarter of an inch or so maybe a little over but not much more than that if you go less than a quarter of an inch then this tool has a tendency to want to kind of crush it almost right don't you notice that yeah. where it kind of crumbles it so you want about a quarter of an inch so you can get a nice as val was mentioning earlier a nice firm grip on i'm trying to pull this out so let me so this, I should be able to score my line here now and just um, take that out. So I'm going to come around and score that. Grab this. Again, come down here where it's a little bit wider, where I can grab it a little bit better, if you can see that. And then I'm going to break that out. So do you do a little downward pressure, or are you just, are you just pulling straight out? No, no, I'm doing, if, if I were to exaggerate this movement, what I'm doing is this, yeah. right? So I'm going like this and kind of pulling a little bit, right? So, um, but more, you know, this is the important part, right? Gotta bend that around. So if you see that, right? So I, I got that cut out, got that inside curve cut out. Um, didn't lose any of these points. Yeah, yeah, if that's your pattern piece, piece, then it makes a difference if you lose those. So seems like sometimes a lot of trouble to go through taking it out in sections and stuff. But I think in the long run, if, if you don't and you just go for broke and you have to redo it three or four times, you're no, you're not ahead. Yeah. You got, you know, just to take a little extra time and do your piece, your inside curves that way really is a good idea. So we, um, uh, well, if you have any questions, you know, while we're doing this, uh, or even afterwards, you know, feel free to message us on uh, Facebook or Instagram, um, or you can email us at Facebook at DelphiGlass.com. Or make a comment. Yeah, we're making comments below. Space below. And then uh, if you didn't see the previous video or presentation that we did, if you go to our video section on our Facebook page. It was really good you know, if you didn't see it. Yeah. <laughs> it's just super exciting. There's a lot of a lot of drama, so you might want to make sure you catch it. So hopefully one won't have that kind of drama today, right? Right. Um, we did get a couple of questions though from the last time that we did a presentation and somebody was asking us about, you know, we showed the, the various tools last week. We showed the, the breaker grocers and the cutting tool. And um, you know, running pliers, and then the question we got was about a pair of uh, a different pair of running pliers that are made by a German company, the Silbersnitt, uh, made by a company called Bull. Uh, uh, really nice German quality tool, and uh, people were asking us how to use it because it, it's uh, like uh, the running pliers, but it's actually a little different. So let me uh, let me show you how that works. Um, one of the really nice things about this particular running pliers is. I don't know how well you can see this. Uh, if you want to come in, Kaylee, and look at that. But do you see the, the tip, this top tip here? This piece rotates. So the, the, one of the things about the, the running pliers, this pair of running pliers is we always have to line up the score with this center part of the plier. So sometimes it makes it a challenge to get into certain areas. Like, for example, I just drew this uh, curve on this. You know, Val cut this out in the last presentation, but... I drew this on here, and if I were to score this, I mean, with the running pliers, 
it's hard. You can't just put the running pliers up here and try to squeeze that, right? Because they're, they're facing the wrong direction. But this particular tool, since I can turn that top little piece, you know, I can come in, start the break, turn the tool. Go ahead and do it. Did so you score it? No, I didn't score it. No, I'm going to do it. We've got a question here from Carol. What is your opinion uh, about oil in your tool or no oil? Well, you know, um, I know there's like always a, a interesting discussion uh, sometimes about whether you should use oil or not use oil. I, you know, I just tell people I've been doing this for a really long time, but longer than I can probably remember. And uh, I've never used oil ever in a cutter. So, um, and I think I'm cutting just totally fine. So I, I don't use oil in a cutter mainly because to be honest, I'm, I'm kind of lazy and it's the cleanup afterwards, you know? So if you're doing stained glass, you have to remove the oil before you can do copper foil. If you're fusing, um, you know, you gotta get all the oil off, obviously, before you put something in the kiln. So, um, I mean, we run all of our cutters here at Delphi dry. We don't, we don't put oil in them, and I think we do a pretty good job. Mm -hmm. so. I think it's, a, I think it's who taught you. You know, I mean, if you were taught to use oil, you do. If you were taught not to, you don't. But neither way is wrong or right. Mm -hmm. It's just preference. So I scored that big curve. So I mean, hopefully, doing it the right way. I'm kind of turning right here. Um, and then we're going to come on now with the silver snits, and I'm going to just come on this end here. So I've got the player kind of set up the way it normally is. I'm just going to give it a gentle little squeeze. Then if you heard that little pop noise, that's the score starting to run, right? So mm -hmm. It's running to about here. I don't know how well you can see it. You probably can't see it very it's well. It's hard to see, but... But can. now I can come on with this, and I can just turn the player. I know I'm having a hard time seeing it. And then I can turn the player, that little tip, and then squeeze it a little bit more. And now it's running to about here. And then I can turn it so that it's almost completely 90 degrees, I think. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> there is, I know it's hard to see, but there's a line on this little tip here. There's a little line there. So I'm just trying to line that up with the score line, is essentially, or the break at this point, really. Wow, so there you go. So I thought you'd get with live uh, presentation. Yeah, so. well, that happens, so sorry. <laughs> but no, that's but it's but that is an interesting spin on that tool, which you know, I think it I actually think it could be really Well, I got the rest of it out, so yeah. there you go. Get, yeah. Well, really I was trying to get this piece and I didn't really care about that. Uh -huh. so. <laughs> this is really the pattern piece. It, yeah, we don't need piece. these. I don't know. Well, let me show you one other uh, we got like yeah, yeah a minute. Mm -hmm. Let yeah. me just show you real quick one other thing that this tool can do. And um, one of the nice okay. things about it, since it's a little narrower, you know, on the top here compared to the one, yeah. compared to the running pliers, right? It's a little narrower, so um, I think it's easier to cut out some narrow strips with it. If you can see on the table here, I cut these little quarter inch strips out just you know before we we got live here. But I've scored some here. Get that um, so she can. See. Yeah, how well you yeah, can see. I've already scored good? this just to save time, but yeah. basically I'll I'll do one quick score so you can sort of see how I did it. I use this uh, plastic glass square, it's called, to give me a nice uh, right angle. That way my lines are all parallel, and I just scored the strips that way. Now when you're cutting strips, I'll give you just a quick tip. It's easier if you're trying to cut out like four at one time instead of just one. I mean, trying to break this one little one off is kind of difficult. So I'm going to break this out here where the four are at, right? And then now I'm just going to have everything. So I'm going to now just break it in half. So um, just break that in half, come down here, put that on there. And again, because of the narrower jaw, it just makes it easier to break these little skinny strips. So Yeah, that works nice. That works nice for yeah. that. Like I said, for the... Um... You can see how... Yeah. Oh, okay. Beautiful. Good. Well, okay. I think we're about out of time. So yeah. again, if you guys have questions, you know, message us. You know, Facebook, uh, Instagram, uh, email us at Facebook at DelphiGlass.com. Good. So. All right. We'll see you next time. Yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Thanks.